Hey, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. And in this video, we'll be going over how to diagnose and fix your center locker in your 80 Series 9 Cruiser. But before we dive into that, let's talk about how the center diff lock system works in the 80 Series. You have the diff lock actuator that sits on top of the transfer case. The actuator is wired to the transmission relay. The transmission relay receives signal from either the center diff lock dash switch or porting the truck in four low. And with that very brief explanation, let's get into it. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that your center diff lock is truly not working. The best way I found to do this is to jack up one corner of the front, shift the transmission into neutral and spin the wheel. The wheel should spin while it's in four high. And with the transmission in neutral shifting into four low now, you should see a dash indicator light up. But in this case, obviously it's not working. So you're not going to see that and now spin the wheel. It should not spin at all. I'm getting some resistance here, but in reality, this shouldn't spin. The second test is to drive in circles on a dirt or gravel road. I'm not really a fan of this test because it constitutes knowing the feeling of having your locker engaged. And for those who are new to the truck or have never even had their locker working in the first place, you're not really going to know the feeling, but the feeling is supposed to feel like some binding and tightness in the steering wheel while you're turning. And the dash indicator light is showing up on mine. There's something definitely wrong because the center diff lock is not pressed. The transfer case is still in high and that shouldn't be happening in these conditions. You might have to repeat this test a couple of times because it's not as definite as the first one. So let's dive into the first diagnostic test, which is actually the easiest. You're going to check two fuses, the 10 amp gauge fuse and the 30 amp diff fuse. You can see from here that the fuses are still intact. That one's still good. And then the 10 amp one is still good. I ended up replacing these anyways because I didn't know if there was any hidden corrosion in between the plastic. The second diagnostic test is a lot more involved than the first one. You're going to remove the driver's side kick panel and look for the black transmission relay, that box right there. After removing it, we're checking for continuity within the pins. Be sure to refer to this picture of the relay in the repair manual to know the numerical order of the pins. You're checking for continuity with your multimeter between pin one and two and two and four. The reading should be close to zero. If that number one on your multimeter doesn't change at all, that means you have no continuity. You can go further with this test by applying nine volt power to the relay. I had this part of the video flipped because I actually did this backwards. I was not referring to the repair manual initially. Using alligator clips, attach the positive side to pin 7 and the negative to pin 2 and there should be no continuity between pins 9 and 10. And then you can try positive side to pin 9 and negative side to pin 10. There should be continuity between pins 3 and 4 and no continuity between pins 2 and 4. And now moving to positive on the pin six and negative to pin five, you should have continuity between pins one and three and no continuity between pins one and two. An important thing to note here is that the transmission relay is grounded to the limiting switch inside the actuator. So a good transmission relay can still look bad because of the bad ground inside the actuator. If the continuity isn't as specified, you need to replace the relay. Again, I had initially done this all backwards, so I thought my transmission relay was out, but in reality, this transmission relay was perfectly fine. Now onto the diff lock indicator switch. This sits on top of your transfer case, and it's important because it sends signal to the bulb on your dash that indicates that your center locker is on. It's important because front and rear lockers won't engage unless that light is lit up. To test the bulb in your dash, simply jump the connection on the harness side using a paper clip and that should light up the dash indicating that you have center locker on. Now, if nothing happens, then you need to replace or clean the sensor simply using a 27 millimeter wrench, making sure to be careful not smashing your hand in the tight spaces. And while we're down there, we can also replace or clean the L4 sensor switch that's on the tail end of your transfer case. This switch is important because it tells the transmission relay that you shifted into four low, which is going to lock the center. 
When you shift into four low, this sensor sends a signal to the transmission relay, which sends another signal to the actuator to lock. Some people were able to get these working again by simply cleaning them and making sure that the ball bearing is moving freely or that the pin connections were clean. I just replaced mine with an Amazon order. I'll post the link down in the description for those. Now we can move on to diagnosing the center diff lock dash switch. Again, we're checking for continuity and this time we're checking between pins 7 and 10. You should have continuity between pins 7 and 10 in the off position and as well as the on position. The center diff lock dash switch receives power from the same 10 amp gauge fuse that we looked at earlier. In my case, my dash switch was also busted, so I had to replace this. So we now move on to the actual diff lock actuator. You're going to want to unplug the L4 sensor switch to make room so that way you can get to the actual harness back on the other side of the transfer case. So the resistance between pins 2 and 3 should read 0.3 ohms to 100 ohms and then the same pins to a body ground should be 0.5 ohms. A trick that the repair manual doesn't tell you is that you can add a 9 volt battery to pins 2 and 3 and that should force the actuator to lock and then reversing the positive and negative to get the actuator to unlock. If the actuator fails all these tests then it's time to replace the actuator. The solution for my center diff lock was way more simple than everything on the checklist. The connection harness wasn't plugged in all the way. I couldn't tell you what happened here. I don't know why the connection wasn't pushing all the way, but now my center diff lock dash switch works. When I shift to four low, it locks the center diff. Everything works fine. And I guess that's what it was. The connection just wasn't pushed in all the way. I guess I should have noticed because when I unplugged it to test the actual harness, it was way more easier than the other sensors harnesses. So maybe that was my indication. But once I plugged it in all the way, everything worked. Now let's make sure that the center diff lock truly is locking using the same test that we used earlier. With one of the front corners up in the air, the transmission is in neutral and the transfer case is in four high. The wheel spins freely. And pushing the CDL button on the dash locks this front tire because it's locked to the rear. Now shifting into four low, the same thing happens. The same wheel will not spin anymore, indicating that the center diff is locked. And so that's it. That covers everything besides replacing or rebuilding the actuator. So if you need any clarification in these steps, go ahead and check out the article on pnwadventures.com. There's a nice write up on there. I'll post a link down in the description as well as the post on I hate mud that I referred to. It really isn't a difficult process to go through and figure out what's the issue, but I was stuck scratching my head because my issue was not in the repair manual. So if this video helped you out in any way, please give it a like, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.